Okay, so just a little run through here of uh, a bit of assistance we gave to a customer. Um, so we have wiring diagrams in this software. Um, many people are unaware of how to use this. So this is just a quick run through of how we help this customer out to find their problem. So this bike wouldn't start, uh, the starter wouldn't engage. Uh, they proceeded to do a few basic tests, checking clutch switches, side stand switches, etc. Uh, and they got to the starter relay and worked out that it wasn't getting a grounding signal from the ECU uh, and by shorting a couple of pins on that relay they managed to get the bike to start so they knew the relay wasn't actually faulty so it's a case of finding out why the relay isn't being activated by the ECU. So looking through into the wiring diagrams here we've got a lot of information about the system and the components um, educational stuff, testing procedures, testing voltages and oscilloscope signals um, if you want to get heavily into it. Um, but in this case really all we wanted to do was just show that information is in here that can save you a lot of time. Uh, it's just a case of having a look. So this we're just showing through what there is here. So this is just basic information about a starting system, how it works, various educational Tits, tip bits for you. Uh, so we'll just scroll through that just to give you an idea of what's uh, what's in there. So we can highlight the components on the wiring diagram and you can highlight the wiring for each component so you can see what circuits are related to each other. So here we can see the, the, the main live feed to the starter relay and you can see all the other components that that run through. So that may help you in working out if there's a break in the system somewhere. And then you, you have the main grounding wire there to the ECU. And this is another connection to the starter. So we're trying to figure out why the relay wasn't being grounded. So that would take you to the conclusion that either the ECU is unable to send the signal or the ECU is not receiving a signal to then send on to the relay to tell it to start the bike. So logically, what would that be? Well, the first start of that process would be to check if your actual starter button works correctly. Um, and to find that out, it's quite straightforward. We can use the wiring diagram, we can check the relay wiring, uh, and we can also check out the starter wiring. So I've selected a different model here because there's an extra part in this particular year model and it's that little green connector there. So just to show you really the difference between two different models to make sure that you're always choosing the correct model because there may be small differences. So you can see there's the grounding wire to the ECU there and the pinout. So it's just a little bit different to the other model which covers very similar years and there's a bit of overlap. So we're now onto the actual starter button highlighted there and gives you the two wires to the ECU from the starter button. So obviously the two checks there are check the wiring at the connector of the start button uh, for continuity and if you receive continuity through that then go back to the pinouts on the ECU and check for continuity there. And on this particular bike we found out there was continuity at the switch um, but not at the ECU. So that meant there was a break in the wire somewhere between the switch and the ECU and it's a then a case of tracing back through the loom to find out where that wire is broken. And that's essentially the cause of why the bike wouldn't start. So a lot of time can be saved by just logically thinking through the process and starting at the beginning of every circuit. If you push the button and the bike doesn't start, does the button work? Um, test the button. If the button physically works and the contacts operate correctly, then you know the button is okay. Is that the same at the other end of the, of the loom where it connects into the ECU? Uh, and that's quite simple to check via the pinouts. Uh, so you can just use your standard procedures with a multimeter, very straightforward to check those out. So in a very short space of time, we figured out that it was the actual starter button wiring that was causing the problem, not anything else to do with any interlock switches elsewhere on the bike so just 
focusing on the problem and narrowing it down and starting at one end and working your way through. It's a very methodical process to figure out what is actually causing the problem rather than kind of guessing and jumping ahead of yourself. So this is how Texas can help you. You're not going to get a fault code if the start button doesn't work. So you need to use good old fashioned diagnosis and this is how Texa can help you in those situations with wiring diagrams and information and testing procedures. Um, so I hope that uh, gives you a little bit of insight. Um, this isn't just a code reading system. If you're just buying something to read codes, there's other things out there. If you want something that can actually help you in the workshop, save time, earn money, do the job quicker, uh, then Texa is definitely the way forwards, uh, as you can see with this little example. So that was all. Uh, hopefully that helps you give you an idea of what, uh, what we can do with Texa and the other features and abilities that are in there. Uh, you just got to get in there and use it uh, and you can learn a lot. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.